It's my pleasure and honor to have here with me Professor Colombo from the University in Milan. Welcome, Professor Colombo. Thank you very much and thank you for having uh, me here today. Well, it's, uh, it's a big honor to, uh, to sit down with a, with a person of your caliber who has been around so long. Your career uh, is, is long, but you started uh, to be involved in the interventional business around 1986, many yes. years. And um, if you would just indicate what were the most intriguing issues that you encountered during the travel through where we are as today, with coronary stenting. What were the issues that you thought have most attracted you from a clinical point of view and from a research point of view? But uh, I, I like the concept uh, of coronary interventions of angioplasty uh, because uh, after having spent uh, 10 years uh, in cardiology and general medicine in the United States, uh, I, I came across uh, a therapeutic modality to increase the oxygen supply to the heart. At that time, the major therapeutics were all uh, towards decreasing oxygen consumption, a beta blocker, vasodilators, etc. So to me, the idea that we had a tool uh, which did not require major surgery to increase the oxygen supply was very enthusing and interesting. So that what attracted uh, the field of interventional cardiology. And of course, uh, the balloon was the first and uh, not uh, sufficiently effective, not sufficiently safe, uh, and then came the stent. Right, and what would you consider as the most uh, difficult problem uh, to be overcome in the area of stenting. No, in 1986-87, when the first uh, coronary stents uh, were implanted uh, by Jacques Puel and Ulrich Sigbert, uh, the major uh, drawback uh, was the stent uh, thrombosis. Uh, we were dealing uh, in simple lesion with a double digit, 10-12% thrombosis. To overcome uh, stent thrombosis, uh, uh, the development of uh, coumadine, uh, of oral anticoagulants, uh, was a reasonable alternative, uh, but uh, hemorrhagic complications uh, associated uh, with that therapy were quite a problem. So I really been exposed uh, with the sufferance of having an effective uh, therapy, but not being able to utilize uh, uh, this effective therapy to the full uh, benefits. Yeah, I think that indeed is a, is a major issue in the uh, area where you work. Now, on Monday, you're going to deliver to us at uh, this ESC meeting in Paris the uh, very prestigious Grunzig lecture, highlighting basically somebody's uh, life achievements uh, in the field of stenting where you're working. Could you just give us a little glimpse on what you're going to highlight during your lecture? But I, I like to go back uh, to the old uh, work of uh, triad of uh, thrombosis. And thrombosis, uh, it's really a contribution of three major factors, the blood, the flow, and the lumen. And uh, my idea uh, to improve uh, on stent thrombosis uh, was to work uh, uh, on the two areas that uh, we could, the blood by optimizing uh, antiplatelet therapy and the lumen by optimizing uh, stent implantation. Of course, uh, the third factor, which is the distal flow, is something that is difficult uh, to improve uh, because uh, we are dependent on the distal bed, uh, which is the way it is. But uh, the improvement on the lumen by implanting the stent uh, in a better fashion to achieve uh, a larger MLD, minimal lumen diameter, and uh, uh, to improve uh, on platelet uh, inhibition uh, was to me uh, a very important target. And uh, 
I had a lot of difficulty to have people accept uh, in the early 90s uh, the idea to utilize uh, two antiplatelet agents. Which at is that now time, a common yeah, at that time, uh, antiplatelet agents uh, were considered like beta blockers. Why combine uh, two beta blockers? Uh, maybe in three years from now, on five years, we will have. Uh, more than two, more than three antiplatelet, maybe combining antiplatelet with antithrombins, etc., etc. But uh, I think it was a very interesting adventure to move, uh, and uh, I was not the only one. Other people uh, were thinking uh, that aspirin was not the only effective antiplatelet. But I think the idea to combine the two is very interesting. By then, very visionary, and nowadays very implemented. Yeah. So um, we're looking forward to uh, traveling with you through that, uh, let's say, uh, journey yeah. over the time from stenting to newer medical uh, implementations, as you just pointed out. Now, I think in the field where you work is a very clinical field. And uh, one last question that I'd like to pose to you. You're also involved in something we see now at ESC more and more and at other meetings as well, which is live uh, cases, live presentations. You have also done a substantial amount of that. Do you think that these have a lot of pros in teaching the, um, the community uh, on specific topics? Do you think that this is a big step forward? And what are the potential limitations you think of such way of uh, teaching but uh, first of all uh, i uh, when i perform uh, a live case and when i give some suggestion about a live case uh, you always have to think uh, are you willing to be a patient in a live case and that's a very important responsibility for the operator uh, I will accept uh, to be a patient in a live case uh, if the operator really takes uh, the responsibility. The goal is to treat the patient well, not necessarily to teach. Of course you have to teach, but you cannot forget uh, that you have a human being uh, in front of you. And the most important aspect uh, is not to demonstrate uh, how skillful you are, how effective you are in teaching, but how effective you are in taking good care of these gentlemen. Which indeed is the, the core business yeah. of the field but that you're um, working in. Uh, you know, you have to be really, and the audience sometimes, uh, it's a little bit too aggressive. They, they are like uh, uh, the people watching gladiators in the Colosseum. And uh, you don't want to show that because, uh, again, uh, yeah. you have... So if you want uh, uh, to go to the stream, maybe you have to simulate or to do some recording. But uh, when you do a live case, you have to accept sometimes not to be necessarily too impressive to the audience. Well, Professor Colombo, thank you very much for this uh, kind interview. We're looking very much forward uh, to hear you deliver the prestigious Grunzig lecture and share with us um, the journey you made through the area of uh, cardiac stenting, thrombosis, potential pitfalls, potential solutions. Thank you again very much. Uh, thank you to you and uh, thank you to the European Society uh, for this great opportunity.